Hello, welcome to Little Sinter's World today. I have some Persephone Classics book reviews for you. So Persephone Classics are a uh, shop slash publishing house based in London where they print books that for whatever reason have gone out of print. I've done a couple of these before in the past which I'll leave for you up here so you can go and check those out. So shall we get straight into it? I have three uh, for you today. Starting off uh, in no particular order, I have The Wise Virgins by Leonard Wolfe. This is essentially, in a nutshell, about a young man who is an artist, his name is Harry, and he's trying to work out who he should marry. So should he marry Camilla? Camilla is also in the art scene, and if he married her, they wouldn't be deemed kind of respectable, and they'd be kind of... Um, not they would be in like bohemian society rather than um kind of respectable society or should he marry the sensible girl where he will be respected in society um which way essentially should he go down now it is said that the character camilla the arty bohemian one is actually based on his wife who is virginia wolf uh so it's really interesting reading about their kind of relationship and the ending which he chooses I won't spoil it for you because that's just rude. I enjoyed this book and there were some parts of it where I absolutely adored it and thought, oh, this book is brilliant. But then there was other parts of this book where I just didn't understand it. It was just a lot of waffle about nothing. It was a few pages to get into it of just heavy waffle. Um, and then throughout the book, you know, there was these brilliant moments mixed in with these kind of waffly moments and it almost reminded me a bit of like a more bohemian-y artist-y interpretation of like a Dickens or a Hardy you know when you read Dickens or Hardy and it's really descriptive of like a blade of grass or smoke from a chimney it's kind of like that but I just didn't understand what the waffling was on about it's very arty I don't think I'm kind of cool enough to get it um, uh, as I said there are parts of this that I really really enjoyed and thought were really good um, but parts of it that I didn't I ended up giving it about three stars because I, I think it's quite hard to mark um, grade something that you're like you really enjoyed bits of it and then you just didn't understand others so yeah I gave it three stars I'd still recommend you read it um, if you're into Persephone classics and perhaps if you're into Virginia Woolf then read Leonard Woolf work and then you can do a comparison um, but yeah three stars it wasn't the best wasn't the best but that's okay because we're moving on to Greenery Street by Dennis McCall McCall McHale <laughs> get it right um, so this is about a young married couple who go and live in Greenery Street because that is what young married couples do. And that's kind of like, it's like a rite of passage that when you get married, you're a young married couple, you go and live in Greenery Street. When it's time for you to have babies and expand your family, then you move on and you go out of Greenery Street because Greenery Street is just for young married couples. And that is it. That is the plot of the book. Ha. Huh. Um, it is a lot of little subplots. So it's about this young married couple and their relationship together, it's about their finances, it's about uh, their neighbours and their neighbours borrowing a ladder. Sounds strange but read it, you'll love it. Um, it. This book is really funny. It's a lot of nothing going on but everything going on because you get to absorb the world, you get to absorb the characters which are wonderful and the humour in this, oh it's wonderful. I thought, oh no, it's starting off a bit like the other one where it took me a little while to get into and that's just because Dennis has this really interesting writing style but once I was into it wasn't I into it I was just so addicted I mean it's not the smallest book in the world how big are you how big are you uh 372 but I flew through it you know a couple of sittings done um it's a book from the 1920s and it's really funny so if you're after that kind of period and you're after a funny book read it. I highly recommend this. I gave it four out of five stars, so I really enjoyed it. And then, last but not least, um, we have The Call by Edith Arton Zangwill. This one is number 129 in the catalogue of Persephone Classics, so it's, it's a more recent um, edition. And this book is about a young 20-something woman called Ursula. She is a scientist, so she's used to speaking out about her discoveries and what she's working on, etc. And... For one reason or another, she ends up becoming involved in the women's suffrage movement. 
and I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it for you, but it is about getting into the suffrage movement and involvement, but it's, it's also about, and the main bit that I took from it is about relationships with other people when you yourself are involved and how that affects the people that are around you and love you. So relationships that she has with a gentleman friend, shall we say, the relationship with her mother, um, relationships with other women and other men and how people are if they're for the suffrage movement or against it and how they um, are with Ursula when they have different points of view on women's suffrage. I really loved this book. I thought it was really, really good. And then I was doing some research not so long ago um, about the WSPU and Edith Arton Zangwill and her family were involved in the women's suffrage movement. I was like, oh, brilliant. It's not just fiction, you know, she lived a real life like that and that was absolutely fascinating. I gave this book four and a half out of five stars um, and the more I think about it, the more I'm pushing towards that five star movement. I think it's a book that gets better each time you reread it. I think it's one of those. So I'm looking forward to rereading it in the future um, and hopefully giving it that five stars because it was really addictive. It's quite, you know, again, it's quite a big book, but for like a good half of it, you're like, what on earth is going on? And it's just this slow, slow build up and then suddenly whoosh, off you go and everything happens. Um, and I loved it. It was one of those books that when I wasn't reading it, all I wanted to do was read it. Um, so I'm not quite sure what held me back from giving it the five star. But as I say, I think I'll reread it and then I'll love it even more. So there we have it. That is three Persephone classics that I have just reviewed for you. I hope that at least one of these has taken your fancy and is now going to sit on your wish list or you're going to get round to purchasing. I will do my best to leave links for them in the description bar below so you can go and check them out further and purchase them if you want to. I would love your Persephone classic book recommendations in the comment section down below. I read a lot of Persephone classics and I would love to know which ones are the best ones to read. My favourite book of all time, which is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winfrey Watson, if you didn't know, if I didn't talk about it enough, is a Persephone classic. So I love them and recommend to me your favourites in the comment section. So that is it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care and I shall see you soon for my next one. Bye for now.